We'll start. We humans are unable to experience the true nature of the universe unfiltered. Our senses and brains can only process a fraction of the world. So we have to use concepts and tools to learn about the true nature of reality. Technological progress not only widened our knowledge about the universe, it also made us aware of unsettling possibilities. In the future, it might become possible to simulate entire universes. But if this is an option, how can we know that it's not already happened? What if we are not creators, but creations? Is it possible that we are not real and we don't even know it? It's possible. When I have existential thoughts, I consider simulation theory. And that actually started for me back in the 2010s when I was playing that video game called The Sims. Although back then I didn't really have words to articulate what I was thinking. Now, do I think simulation is the most probable explanation for what we know as the universe? No. But I don't discount it either. I remember there was a show on Netflix called Dark. It's German. I'm not sure if it's still on anymore. But on there, one of the characters said, if the world is a simulation, then deja vu is a glitch in the matrix. And that made sense to me, considering that the longer a simulation runs, the more likely it is to accumulate errors. So that could result in a deja vu experience or a Mandela effect moment. Except I'm not completely sold on Mandela effect just because our memory is so fickle. But if you have a good video on that that you want to recommend to the channel, please do. Anyway, there's no conclusive way to know whether we're in a simulation or not. We're limited by our own understandings of technology. And then we have no clue what type of technology our simulators are working with. Or even if they have the same method of calculation we do. So I'm excited for this one. This channel was highly recommended by quite a few subscribers. So here we are. If our current understanding of physics is correct, then it's impossible to simulate the whole universe with its trillions and trillions of things. But we don't actually need to anyway. We only need enough universe to fool the inhabitants of our simulation into thinking that they're real. Who needs billions of galaxies? We only need the space our subjects are allowed to explore. That's a weird part. The vast universe could just be a flat projection and they would have no way to know. What about small things like cells or bacteria? We don't really need them. When you use a microscope, what you see could be instantly created. Same with atoms. The chair you're sitting on right now does not need to be simulated with quadrillions of atoms. We just need the outermost layer of it. It might be empty inside until you decide to break it open. Your body might feel like it's filled with bubbly things, but it might be empty. I remember when I was younger, I used to think that when I changed the channels on a television, that the other channels just stopped existing, or that my classmates only existed at school. But then I remember telling my dad, and he let me know that the universe did not revolve around me. I was six, and he's not a scientist, so. Until you open it. The minimum requirement for our simulation is only the consciousness of our virtual humans. Our subjects just need to think the simulation is real. Okay, so are we being simulated? Well, maybe, but there are a few conditions that need to be met. Obviously, we have no authority over this topic, so please take everything we no say with a grain of salt. Based on a modified version of the original simulation argument by Nick Bostrom, we have five assumptions for you. If they're true, you, dear viewer, are living in a simulation. Let's hear it. Assumption one, it's possible to simulate consciousness. It's such a broad term, consciousness. Do all those who have brains have consciousness? By some definitions, yes, but I think a strong case could be made for no. And if we do, or if they do, we'll say, is free will just an illusion? I don't know. Nobody knows what consciousness is. For the sake of argument, let's assume that you could generate consciousness by simulating a brain. 
brains are pretty complex. If you count every interaction between synapses as one operation, your brain runs at about 10 to the power of 17, or 100 million billion operations per second. Let's generously assume we need 10 to the power of 20 operations to simulate one second of human consciousness. But we don't want to simulate just one human, we want to simulate all of human history at once so we can skip around. Let's say we want to simulate 200 billion humans with an average lifespan of 50 years. One year has 30 million seconds times 50 years times 200 billion humans times 10 to the power of 20 operations. So we need a computer able to handle a million, trillion, trillion, trillion operations per second. More operations than there are stars in the observable universe. A computer like this is just impossible. Except, maybe it isn't. Maybe not in the future. Assumption 2. Technological progress will not stop anytime soon. If we assume that technological progress continues in a similar fashion as it has so far, then there might be galaxy-spanning civilizations with unlimited computer power at some point. Beings on a technology level so advanced that we could barely distinguish them from gods. A computer that can handle a million, trillion, trillion, trillion operations is serious business, but there are actually concepts for computers which could handle this. The Matryoshka brain is a theoretical megastructure made up of billions of parts orbiting a star feeding on its radiation. A computer of this scale would have enough power to simulate many thousands, if not millions, of humanities at the same time. Other technologies, like high-end future quantum computers, might lower the size drastically, so it might be possible to do this with a structure the size of a large city, or even smaller. But only if there's still no. someone around to build the computer. Assumption 3. Advanced civilizations don't destroy themselves. Eh, they could do. Especially if they divide themselves by invisible lines of territories, call them countries, with conflicting interests and in nuclear power. Hmm. If there is a point at which all civilizations destroy themselves, this whole discussion ends here. Looking into space, you'd expect a universe filled with millions of alien civilizations, but we see nobody. The reason for this might be great filters. Great filters are barriers life has to overcome, like nuclear war, asteroids, climate change, or a black hole generator. If life is inherently self-destructive, then there are no simulations. We explain this in more detail in our Fermi Paradox video. I'll have to watch that. Assumption 4. Super-advanced civilizations want to run simulations. I would definitely want to run a simulation. Let me know if you went down below. I don't know if you guys remember, maybe in the early thousands, they were selling those sea monkey kits, which feels pretty close to a simulation, if you're not counting a video game. But if you've ever had one of those, you're essentially creating your own ecosystem for $39.95 plus shipping and handling. I don't know if they still make those anymore. I'll check after this. When we speak of post-human civilizations, we don't know what we're dealing with. To think we know what beings as powerful as gods want is pretty arrogant. Imagine the smartest ant on Earth living next to an amusement park. It's curious about what humans are up to, so you try to explain. Unfortunately, the ant just doesn't understand. The concept of roller coasters and standing in lines and holidays and fun doesn't make sense to an ant living an ant life. It's the same with us and a post-human being. Mm -hmm. Compared to them, we are ants. Running simulations for fun or science might be an absurdly stupid idea to them. But if they do want to run simulations for whatever reasons, and assumptions 1 to 3 are true too, then the chances are not zero that you are living inside a simulation. Assumption 5. If there are a lot of simulations, you are probably inside a simulation. If there are simulated civilizations, it's likely that there are a lot of them. After all, we assume that post-human beings have access to practically unlimited computing power. So if they run simulations, it would be convenient to run millions or even billions of them. If there are billions of simulated universes, there are probably trillions and trillions of simulated conscious beings, which would mean that the vast majority of all conscious beings that will ever have existed are simulated. So, for every conscious being made of flesh, a billion simulated ones exist. 
Since we have no way of knowing if we are simulated or not, in this case, the chances of you being one of the 999,999,999 simulated ones are pretty high. So what you consider reality NPCs. might not be real at all. What? You really might be simulated. All of this is based on a lot of assumptions that we can't really test right now. So many scientists disagree with this whole thought experiment. So don't burn your house down to test if there will be glitches. If you are simulated, not that much changes for you. You might be on a small planet speeding through eternal nothingness or a simulation inside a computer. Your existence does not become more or less scary and bizarre. All we can hope to do is try to live good lives and have a good time. And hope that if we actually are simulations in a supercomputer, nobody trips over the power cable. Oh. Oh. Oh no. I think I just unplugged the simulation. But what if that doesn't matter? What if we are in one right now? What if you are simulated? Jake over at Vsauce 3 is looking into that. Click here to watch Not his me. video and subscribe to his channel. Well, thanks for sending this one over. And to their last point, I don't think much would change for me if I found out that we were in a simulation. I just don't think that it would make the human experience any less real for us. If I had a headache, it would still ache. If I stubbed my toe, I would still curse. Maybe what it would change is there might be more emphasis on the gamification of life. But even then, I think there will always be people who are playing checkers and people who are playing chess. So it's really hard to say. And then who's to say that our simulators aren't in a simulation themselves? And if we are, did they program us to think about the possibility that we are in a simulation? Or did we just figure that out and they're somewhere sweating behind their keyboards? We'll never know. There are no answers to this one. No definitive anything, just something to think about when you can't sleep in the middle of the night. So for a literary recommendation, when I read the title of this video in my inbox, it's called Is Reality Real? The Simulation Argument. I immediately thought of a book that gives the other side of this, the anti-simulation theory argument. It's called The Doomsday Calculation. I read that book last year, but I think that I will have to end up rereading it sometime in the future when I have a better understanding of everything. So I'll circle back, but if you've read it, let me know if you liked it. Or if you can think of another simulation theory-esque book, let me know. I'm not sure of the author's name for that one, so I'll have it for you in the bio. But I did have quite a few recommendations for this channel, as I said. It's called... <laughs> Actually, yesterday, one of the comments on my video was very funny. Hold on, I wrote it in a note because I liked what it said. By a subscriber called Susifer. And he said, part of being smart is being so within the known limits, within your known limits in public. So I'll say that again, more cohesively. Part of being smart is being so within your known limits in public. So I was going to attempt the name of this channel, uh, but I looked at it and thought, nope, I think it's in German. I am sure I won't say it correctly. So I'll link it in the bio for you. You can read it yourself. If you want to spell it out phonetically for me, I'm here for it. And send more videos like this. I love them. Let me know what you think about any of this simulation theory, any similar theories. And that's all I've got. As always, thank you for watching with me. Catch you next time.